scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, episode four of Web of Fear. Yes, I know you've probably noticed they're not coming every day, they're coming every other day, but that's just to give everyone enough time to download them. So, episode four. Basically, we've reached the halfway point. We're back into full vision. Yes, none of this stilted photograph nonsense. So, we're going to get some Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. Well, all right, Colonel. We're going to get some Lethbridge Stewart action. Now, you have to remember when you're watching this that Lethbridge Stewart's never been in the series before. He could be, well, he could be the villain just as much as anyone else. And it's kind of implied he is. And it's just brilliant. Now, this episode splits very easily into two different halves. First half, chat. Second half, location filming of Army vs. Yeti. We'll cover that in a minute. It's just a brilliant episode. Considering this is the halfway point in what would usually be described as, well, a bit of padding or fluff. It's just kind of pacey and exciting. But the best bit of it all by far, and this has been the same all the way through, is the lighting. It's just exquisite. It's a really genuinely well-made piece of television. Now, it opens with the bit of film that should have been at the end of the last one. It actually should have been moving at the end of episode three, because this is a reprise of Trevor's being abducted by the Yeti. Now, it surprised me that they didn't have the moving bit, because they had the moving bit at the beginning of episode three, which was the end of episode two, if you see what I mean. Now, the first half, like I said, is fairly, fairly is the studio bound section. Now, that consists of the culmination of the plan to try and blow up bits of web. The doctor also takes a sample of web, which is a bit icky, but it's really nicely shot, especially with an overlay of some sort of, well, I would say video effect, some sort of physical effect on top of what's being trimmed. Considering the web or the great intelligence is meant to have no physical presence whatsoever, the web definitely seems to react. Now, this Welsh squaddy bloke, who just keeps, well, jumping the line between really annoying and kind of fab. That business with standing behind the sign with the the legs sticking out was just, you know, hilarious. And it could be in a new Doctor Who. And, of course, it's really annoying and looks a bit clumsy as well. I just can't decide. But with hindsight, of course, he's one of the few surviving characters. I mean, when the staff sergeant goes off and ends up being consumed by the web, that's pretty grim. Well, it's icky and nasty and, you know, it's a shame because this guy could have ended up in unit and been brilliant. Just for a few rewrites, we wouldn't have had Mike Yates. We would have had Staff Sergeant whatever he is. Which brings us to the second half. The plan to rescue the TARDIS from the fog-free above-ground London. Of course, there's all that business with the chess pieces being planted in people's pockets, which is kind of cool. But the Yeti are about to attack and you know that is worthy of havoc. It's just brilliant the way it's shot. It's actually exciting. It's pacey. It's just as good as any episode of, well, the Avengers or the Professionals or anything like that. To be honest, it's a bit better. You see, when you're dealing with monsters, the idea is to have them lurking and looming in shadows. Now, I know the Yeti are basically the foot soldiers in this storyline, but that's fine. You get to see them full on. They're wandering the streets and they're still rock hard. You imagine them being extremely strong and extremely powerful. You don't get to see them do the killing blows, but that's because it's a kid's show. Still, everyone's being bumped off, one at a time, bringing the cast down to its minimal amount, which is exactly how it should be in Base Under Siege stories. I'm sure that I could hear the Cyberman march from Moonbase in the background, you know, that one going on, but I might have been mistaken. As I said, this is the first time I've ever seen this story. So yeah, a fantastic episode four, nice to see everything moving. Troughton's just brilliant. And I, for one, can't wait until I see episode five. So until then, when I'll report back, be seeing you. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who is the property of the BBC and no infringement is intended. To contact the show or to find out more about Hoostrology and my other works, click on the links on the Tin Dog Podcast homepage. 
why not follow Blue Box Messiah, all one word, on Twitter to keep up to date with tour dates of my forthcoming Doctor Who comedy play. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs> 